Over the weekend, the CDC quietly released guidelines to reopen the country during the pandemic after the White House previously shelved the agency's original draft. The 60-page document is the most comprehensive blueprint to date to come out of the Trump administration. It includes detailed advice on how to mitigate the spread of coronavirus in areas like schools, mass transit, and workplaces. As White House correspondent Ben Tracy reports, the president's team, as opposed to overly detailed guidance, hoping states will reopen as quickly as possible. So we did the right thing, but now we have to get back to work. At a cabinet meeting at the White House Tuesday, President Trump said he was right to shut down the country to prevent the spread of coronavirus, but said it's also now right to push states to open back up. We're opening up our country. Uh, we're opening it up very fast. On Capitol Hill, Democrats grilled Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, accusing the administration of rushing to send people back to work without a plan or equipment to keep them safe. How many workers should give their lives to increase the GDP or the Dow Jones by a thousand points? You know, workers should give their lives to do that, Mr. Senator, and I think your characterization is unfair. Mnuchin gave a blunt warning about the impact of prolonged lockdowns on the U.S. economy. There is the risk of permanent damage. Hello. Meanwhile, President Trump is doubling down on his decision to take a daily dose of hydroxychloroquine, an anti-malaria drug not proven to prevent or treat coronavirus. I think it's worth it as a line of defense, and I'll Stay on it for a little while longer. I'm just very curious myself, but it seems to be very safe. But his own vice president, Mike Pence, is not following Mr. Trump's lead. Uh, my physician has not recommended that, but I, I wouldn't hesitate to take the counsel of my doctor. During several events Tuesday attended by both the president and vice president, there was little social distancing and almost no one wore a mask, despite the White House saying aides are now required to wear one when they're not at their desks. And Ben Tracy joins me now from the White House. Ben, I'd like to start with these new comments out this morning from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo talking about the firing of the State Department Inspector General, saying that this was not retaliation. I want to play for you exactly what he had to say. There are claims that this was for retaliation, for some investigation that the Inspector General's office here was engaged in. It's patently false. I have no sense of what investigations were taking place inside the Inspector General's office couldn't possibly have retaliated for all the things. I've seen the various stories that like, someone was walking my dog to sell arms to my dry cleaner. I mean, I mean it's all just crazy. What it's all, it's all, it's all crazy arms? stuff. Sir, so so I, didn't have, I didn't have access to that information, so I couldn't possibly have retaliated. It would have been impossible. There's one exception. Uh, I was asked a series of questions in writing. I responded to those questions with respect to a particular investigation that was sometime earlier this year, as best I can recall. You heard right there. He did admit that there was one in investigation that he knew of an unnamed inspector general, according to Pompeo. What else did we learn? Well, he did not specify what that one exception is, but it appears to be a reference to an investigation into whether or not the Trump administration acted illegally when it went around Congress and declared an emergency so it could sell arms to Saudi Arabia. Congress had put a freeze on those arms sales. Now, in that investigation, the secretary did answer written questions, but did not agree to do an interview. So Democrats could say there could be retaliation here because you knew there was an investigation going on into some of your actions, and you even knew the specific line of questioning. So you can imagine up on Capitol Hill, they will be following up on that as these questions uh, continue as to uh, Secretary Pompeo's actions. Ben, I want to turn back to your piece and, and the mention of the CDC guidelines. Can you give us a sense as to why a month after many of the states started reopening, the CDC is sort of quietly rolling out these new guidelines? Well, I think if the CDC had their way, they would not quietly roll them out. I think they'd like to actually draw some attention to this because this is the most detailed guidance uh, we have gotten from the federal government as to how to safely reopen everything from daycares and schools to bars and restaurants. But there has been this tension between the CDC and the Trump administration about how much detailed information to give states. The White House wants these states to get open as quickly as possible. They want governors and local officials to be making these decisions. 
and they're really wary about any advice that they think is what they call overly prescriptive that could get in the way of that momentum of these states opening up. So what you saw is last week some very thin guidance went out, these one-page sheets about how to open this stuff, and then on Sunday, with really no attention drawn to it by the White House, the CDC released this 60-page document. Meanwhile, we hear President Trump is threatening to withhold funding from two democratically controlled states, Michigan and Nevada. This is over the expansion of mailing uh, voter, uh, mailing vote, expansion of mail voting. Okay, got that out. Um, is this something, Ben, you think other states are doing? Does the president really have a unilateral authority to pull federal funding for something like this? Yeah, I mean, there is vote by mail going on in all sorts of states in this country, and it's only expanding, and not just because of the current pandemic, that is one driver of this, but this has been expanding over the course of many years, and in certain states, it's all mail-in voting, but the president has taken issue with this. He says there is widespread fraud when it comes to mail-in voting, even though there is no evidence of that. So today on Twitter, he went after Michigan and Nevada. As you said, he accused the secretary of state in Michigan of going rogue and mailing ballots out to everybody in Michigan. That is not at all what she did. She sent out a notice for people to apply for a ballot if they want one for the elections coming up in the fall, as is their right as citizens of Michigan. As to whether or not the president could withhold federal funding from these states, if it's funding that's allocated by Congress, he doesn't have much power to do that. The one thing he could do right now, perhaps, is to withhold some of the FEMA funding that is helping some of these states cover the costs of addressing coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Ben, I also want to ask you, I know there's a lot of buzz yesterday, the Trump administration declassified an email from former President Barack Obama's former National Security Advisor, Susan Rice. She had sent this to herself the day of President Trump's inauguration. What exactly does this email show and what are Republicans trying to point at with this? So this email details a meeting between uh, President Obama, then President Obama, Vice President Joe Biden, the FBI Director James Comey, Susan Rice, and some others. And in this meeting, apparently, uh, Jim Comey was expressing some concerns about sharing intelligence with the incoming Trump administration, and namely the incoming National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. His concerns were based on what he felt were too many conversations between Flynn and the Russian ambassador and concerns that perhaps he was sharing intelligence with the Russians. Now, in this email, Susan Rice says that President Obama told the FBI to do everything by the book, um, and some Republicans are seizing on that uh, to infer that perhaps the FBI wasn't doing everything by the book and the president was correcting them, but also seizing on the idea that perhaps the Obama administration had ordered the FBI to spy on the incoming administration. So each side is kind of using this for their own purposes. You have Democrats saying, hey, look, this shows that President Obama said do it by the book and they were doing everything by the book. And you have Republicans saying, no, this shows that you were looking for dirt on incoming uh, Trump officials. Mm. Ben Tracy at the White House. Ben, thank you very much.